show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all in one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users had his first $100,000 a month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings and of course to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a special guest, which the caption is already up. Um, we have a special guest today, uh, Investor Mel and Dave. We're actually here live, so if you guys have questions or comments, please put it in the chat. We will put them up on the screen, and we'll answer them live. So uh, we're going to hop right into it. We have Investor Mel and Dave. How you guys doing today? Happy Thursday. How look at the calendar? Hello. <laughs> hey. Thanks, Daniel, for, for having us yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having us great. on. Yeah, happy Thursday right back at you. So are you guys from Canada, or what part of the country are you from? We Correct. are, yes, we're located um, in Canada, but we also invest um, in, in five con- countries total, so um, yeah, including the U.S. <laughs> That's crazy. So what five countries do you invest in? Canada, U.S., uh, we're in Texas and Florida. Yeah, so Canada, U.S., Costa Rica, Mexico, and Dominican Republic for now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. I hope to be across multiple markets as well. Right now, it's just U.S.-based right now, but it's, it's very interesting to... Um, what's quick question about that? How is it, is it difficult to invest in other countries? Do you have to get like a bank account and you have to like register to get a company in some of these countries or how does that work? Exactly. And honestly, Daniel, the, the, the biggest thing that we've noticed is doing it in five countries. The nuances is the, well, and it's kind of like any real estate is, is the accounting stuff, right? Like the legal and all that. Yes. But it's the accounting because it's, it's all how is that income going to be treated back home? So it's all making sure tax treaties. What is the code? How do I structure myself there to, to be compliant? Uh, and it's just to avoid double taxation, right? The, legally, I don't want to give governments any money, but I know we have to, but I don't want to give two governments uh, more money than, than I would have to legally. So it, that's that's the biggest nuance yeah. is the accounting structure. Other than that, uh, once you actually own the properties, um, the property management because of course you're going to have different teams um since you're in different areas uh, managing your your properties uh, we have an asset manager to help us with that who who's communicating with the teams as well um but overall i mean it's a great way to really diversify your portfolio and we love it because it's a great we love traveling we love traveling with the kids so uh we get to to go on many trips in a year no that's, that's amazing it's amazing what's what's crazy and like if everybody doing like real estate virtually how important is your team Oh my gosh. And seriously, I love my team. I don't know what we would do without them. Um, It's been a a game changer and and it doesn't happen overnight. Of course, sometimes as it gets started in real estate, but we have a, we have a worldwide team. Um, So yeah, we love our team and we wouldn't be here without them. (laughs) Uh, What are some tips and tricks to find a team overseas? Because I think like finding the right people is always difficult, but finding the right finding the right people overseas might be another challenge even on top of that. Yeah, your network, right? Your network is your net worth. And um, that's definitely how we've grown our network as well. It's having those right connections, being able to, to ask for referrals from different people. Mm-hmm. And then as these team members join our team, then we can ask them to help us with other members. Um, so it's kind of that domino effect. And, and just being in, in different... Um, I guess uh, even inside the action family, right? Some of our team members were part of our, our, our program and, and now um, they're part of the team. So just those kind of opportunities, just being able to really, um, once you find somebody uh, grabbing them and making sure you treat mm-hmm. them well and, and that you really make it a win-win with them. No, that's amazing. One thing I really, I, I heard right there is um, you found your team members from your community. And I think that's awesome. That's mm-hmm. awesome. So um, how big is your community? How many people have you like taught or educated? How many people are part of like your current group right now 
How big yeah, is that right so now? Yeah, so it's the Action Family. Some of you might have, uh, if you've seen us online, I'm sure you, you heard us uh, talking proudly about our, our community. Um, we're about 1,500 students as part of uh, the Action Takers, we call them, as part of the Action Family. Um, uh, Canadian and, and US uh, students as well. And, and it's all about buying properties, mm -hmm. no money down and no joint venture partners. So that's really what our specialty uh, is. More and more of our students are doing um, what we're doing as well, starting to diversify in different countries as well. But essentially, it's really about buying the properties while still having sole ownership without the joint venture partners. That's amazing. Are you guys going after larger assets too? Because that would, that would sep definitely separate yourselves from everybody else. Yeah, we are. We are targeting some larger assets as well. We've kind of got some other things on, on the back end, kind of working on it. But uh, um, yeah, and, and honestly, like it's yeah, the larger assets are kind of they're sexier, right? They 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 it's it's exciting. Um, but we also like how do I say this? We don't lose track of like Mel and I. We we were able to quit our jobs on duplexes and triplexes, right? So it, it's kind of keeping that main thing the main thing and. Um, if a building makes sense, whether it's got two doors or 10 doors, it's, it's, Hey, what, uh, you know, what is the time in, what is the effort in, what is the, uh, I, uh, you know, the, the return on investment, all that stuff. So, well, one yes, year we both, bought what? all okay. bigger ones and smaller ones, I guess well, is kind of, we bought it. Was it a triplex or fourplex and a 50 plex? Um, and people say, why would you buy, you know, different sizes because they both made financial sense and we could get a, a nice lift from them. Um, but yes, of course, uh, some bigger assets that we're, we're currently working on as well. Um, uh, but also acknowledging that, yeah, exactly. Especially when you get started, um, sometimes the, the smaller ones could be a great way to get uh -huh. definitely started. It definitely helped us, um, get to where we are today. So how long have you guys been doing this? Because it's, it sounds like you've really made a lot of traction in a short amount of time. It seems like. Yeah, we've been, I mean, we've been in real estate um, for about 23 years combined. Mine, yeah. So when I first met Dave, I had uh, two buildings. Dave had the one um, with single dwelling. And uh, and then we decided, hey, let's do this. Let's, let's create wealth through real estate. And uh, and that, that was kind of our journey. We started using it. However, we did it the traditional way, using our own funds, working all the time. And of course, then we hit that common roadblock where we ran out of money. Uh, so, so that's where we want, we had to get really creative and, uh, we decided to, well, to get into creative financing and, and, uh, that it was a game changer for us because, uh, and it is often for many investors out there as well. If you have some funds, the reality is if you use all your funds, you're at some point going to get run out of, of your money. Mm -hmm. And I wish I would have started right away with creative financing looking back. Uh, but it is, it is what it is, of course. Um, but it, it's so powerful because then you become limitless. You, you can buy like one year, we bought 12 properties in 12 months and they were all multifamily properties at that time. There's definitely no way we'd had no, funds. We couldn't afford it with our uh, own money. Yeah. We couldn't afford it with our own money. So there's no way we would have had the funds to pay for, for, for the down payment. Right. So, uh, one thing I love about creative financing is like, it really amplifies what you do have. You don't have to have very much and like, you can get a no money down deal. It's they're out there. You have to negotiate those, but the money you do have can be amplified and stretched to do limited, limitless deals. And that's the power of creative financing. And, and Daniel, just to comp and I, I 100% agree with you, that year that Mel's talking about when we bought the 12 properties in 12 months, right, 56 units, we had a line of credit, I think it was like 70 or 80, right? So we would that would be like our deposit and it would be kind of some of the closing costs and that. But we were able to spread that 80K over X amount of properties. And then we would negotiate closing costs as part of the deal. So. Yeah, I agree with you. If you if you have a certain amount of funds, like because a lot of people will just dump it into one deal and then they're done, right? Or they got to wait exit. Like, no, spread the love. Make that make that make you a lot more money and and a lot more deals. <laughs> no, I I, th I think it's, it's definitely like a, definitely a hack of, and the amplification of of the, of the cash you do have. So, um, creative finance. Have you always done creative finance, or like did you learn it like three five years in? And like, what what was that what was that process like? Um, well, no, not at the beginning. Um, we thought it was illegal. Yeah, we... <laughs> I, I thought it was like mafia, hell's angels. I'm like bookies. I'm like, I'm not getting my legs broken. Like I, I literally, <laughs> I, I, that's what we thought initially was seriously. We thought it was illegal or under the, under the table stuff. Yeah. And then uh, we were on a trip, uh, in Florida, uh, listening to rich dad, poor dad. And although it didn't teach us how to do it, it definitely changed our mindset that, okay, we're doing it all wrong here, working all the time, trading our time for money. And that's when we we decided to do it differently and really, you know, spend a lot of time uh -huh. um, learning about creative financing. We we met with a lot of successful real estate investors, did a lot of research. 
we also met with people who tried it and weren't successful yeah. um, as well to really learn as well from their mistakes and their successes. And and then the next year, that's when we bought the the twelve and twelve, and I was able to quit my full time job the year after, which was which was amazing. And then Dave, um, he was shortly a full time, after, yeah, yeah, shortly after. That's why we got the helmet, or if you move, I, I, don't know. I was so a firefighter. Yeah. yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can see the yellow. He he used to be a firefighter, so. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. No, I, I used to be a truck driver, so it's almost. Oh, right. Hey. <laughs> awesome. And I worked at a local college. I was in business, so. It's kind of interesting the the path that that you take and where you end up, and it's like, what I used to do that. Yeah, yeah. I know it. It seems like a whole other life ago. Too. I worked at the government at one point. Anyway, yeah. I know what. Now that we're real estate investor, I'm sure you're the same way. It's like, I can't believe I did that before. It doesn't even make sense. I, I'm a real estate investor, you know through in and out anyway yeah, i couldn't do my own schedule what do you mean <laughs> the, the the own schedule thing is is, is priceless for sure it's priceless. Uh, i do have a creative finance question so have you used creative finance outside of the us yeah and in yeah yeah absolutely and and we're doing it in five different countries so we've done it in canada uh us costa rica mexico and uh most recently uh dr dominican republic yeah and what's neat about it, um, uh, like owner financing that we've, that's often how we started off with owner finance deals, for example, here in, in, in Canada, and then we started doing it elsewhere as well. But for Costa Rica, for Costa Rica, for example, that's exactly what we did there was owner financing and a promissory note, for example, where the owner was willing to, to hold financing for us um, and, uh, and also use a promissory note. No, I, I, I really want to hone in on that because a lot of people think like I can, I can only you can only do it in the U.S. I'm like, no, <laughs> if you're creative, if you can creatively negotiate, you can creatively negotiate anything you want. Well, you can. And just to 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 be very clear here before somebody negotiates an owner finance deal and thinks they have it done because it's a yes. We get deals all the time on coming through you know on our desks um, and some deals may cash flow, but it doesn't mean that we know how we're going to pay back these people. And that's why I have a big exit sign behind me there is because you need to make sure that when you get into creative financing, that you know how you're going to be paying people back. And, we, that, and that's, we have a puppy here at our office. Yes, so it must be a visitor in the office. Yeah. I might go grab her. She's a six month old German shepherd. So I'll turn right back. Uh, but, but it's, but it's um, yeah, it, exactly. You need to make sure you know exactly how you're going to pay back the lender, whether it's owner financing or you're using secured funds or you're using a promissory note. You need to know how you're going to pay them back before you enter the deal because the reality is not every deal is going to make sense and you will have to pass on some deals for sure i've i've looked at some great deals where it cash flowed i love the location the tenants were great like there was so many check marks for me but i didn't have a clear exit strategy so i had to pass on the deal um and that's okay because i'm in it for the long term wealth and long-term success um so that's something really really important um to, to do as well as an investor so I have, I have a question about your team. So are, is your team like in-house or do you do like third-party contracting where you kind of like partner with other people or like are they all employees? A variety of both. So we have um, many the internal team, like we have a student success and social media internal team. Um, and then we, you know, our bookkeeping and all that. And then we also have um, some contractors like property management that we outsource. Um, those kind of things are, are more on the outsource side. Mm, okay. So I have a question for you because we've done it before, but I don't know if you have. Have you used your online credibility to get a deal? Yeah, yes, we have. Uh, absolutely. Um, it, this reminds me, a deal that actually fell through was one, it was actually in Texas. It was a mobile home park. Um, and that was something where I, we were negotiating with the real estate agent back and forth. And we were trying to do seller finance. And he's like, well, I don't know them. They're Canadian. He was reluctant. He was a little worried. And I said, well, just... Like I didn't want to pull that car, but I said, just tell him to check out this on social media. Like again, like, and then all of a sudden he was open to doing creative yeah. fire, seller finance. So of so course it's and, not our go-to, but, but it does get, and, 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 but I want to say this, when we bought the 12 properties in 12 months, nobody knew who we were. We, we were not yeah. invested in Mel and Dave. We were just Mel and Dave. Um, you know, we're still working. Showing up to deals with ACDC t-shirts. And an yeah. old rusty van. <laughs> um, but we had our exit strategy and that definitely helped uh, convince people and show the confidence in our deal. So if you're starting off and you're thinking, but hey, Val and Dave, I don't have a following on social media. I don't, you know, I'm not out there. And that's okay because every investor has to start with their first deal. Um, every, every one of us have to have our first one, second one. And the, and the neat thing about it, of course, 
the more you do it, the more your credibility goes up, the easier it does, uh -huh. the, the easier it does get. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I bring that up because my, my partner, my, my partner, he's like the sales side. So I don't know how, I don't know exactly how you guys are, but me and my partner, he's front end and I'm like the back end person that does all the back end everything. And uh, I saw, I was messing, where he was texting, uh, he actually does like actually text sellers and stuff like this. So he's like, yeah, it's like, I don't how, how, the seller's like, how can I trust you? And how can I, how do I know you're a real person? And he's like, I have a thousand videos. I have a thousand videos on YouTube. Go check it out. And <laughs> he just dropped the link. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they do, of course. And, and, and you know what, good on them. They're doing their due diligence because um, if you're on the flip side and you are mm. looking to invest with somebody else, you should be doing your homework as well to make sure that they are real, you know, that it's not scams, right? Happening type of thing. Yeah. It, it's a, it's such an interesting, like, dynamic I, th I thought i would never like see or use that personally but like man when people are like tough and they give you like they back up against the wall and like kind of like hide and like okay we have to do something creative for this person oh mm -hmm. there we go good for you <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting um what uh opportunity presents itself in different yeah. ways you know oh i agree so um what has been your most difficult like thing you've came up with that or that you hit like because like entrepreneurship like there's like levels everybody thinks like it's all sunshine and rainbows when you get to a certain level but there's the problems just get bigger so like what was what was what was a big struggle that hit you early on that you really didn't know how to overcome but like looking back at it like oh that was easy i have a quick one that i'm thinking of um at first we so at first we ran out of money. So we already touched on that one. So I'm not going to touch on that one. We got into creative financing. Okay, that's amazing. Now we have a huge growth, about 12 properties in 12 months. That was 56 units. Plus we had other ones and we kept buying afterwards. And all of a sudden we're up to, I think, 87 doors. We were at that time still managing ourselves, the property management piece. So now it's like we're bottleneck. We're self-managing. Uh -huh. We had people doing the renovations and those kind of things, cleaning. But it's like, okay, it, it quickly got, because it was such great huge growth which was amazing but all of a sudden it got really not fun and we had no time um and we had to shift and, and that's when um the whole property management delegating that and at first we had our own internal team and uh but then we found that was still a lot of work from from us as well so now we just outsource everything but having those projects and being okay i think uh, for us was the reality of, of being okay to let it go and i think that's a very common roadblock for many of us that we want that control of it because at the end of the day nobody's going to care about your business as much as you do and that's yeah. often the reality uh, but however unless you delegate and unless you you bring on other team members whether internally or contractors um you you will be up to here and you won't be able to continue to grow and mm -hmm. you won't be doing the tasks that you're really good at and really enjoy and that are probably higher uh, income producing as well uh, I, I think it's a uh... I, heard, I saw this online. It was one of those. It was one of those statements for like, like you said, no, no one, no one, no one works as hard as you do. But if you can find two employees that do like fifty percent of you do, that's that's still equivalent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. It's just looking at okay, even if it's maybe I would have done it this way, but being okay that if it, it's not necessarily what I would have done, but they still care and they still do it very well. Um, and while they're doing that, I'm able to look at the next deal instead of looking at the next country that I want to go in or speak with a, an investor or spend time with our students and doing those kind of tasks that we really enjoy instead, mm -hmm. um, then it's, you know, it's, it's, it's worth the, the, the return on, on, on the investment of, of having these team members or contractors. Wow, that's awesome. So um, what, what is the, what's the delegation between you two? Because what, what, what I've seen with uh, couples that work together, they're, they don't step in, they try not to step on each other's toes. So what's the, what's the different uh, actions you do in your own business from each yeah, other? Well, I think it, it definitely changed as yeah. we grew. Um, at first, I think we, we did everything together just to really make sure that we were doing it properly and have, you know, each other's eyes on it. I'm um, one nod. And then naturally we divide and conquer on on our on our passion and, and what we love doing so dave is definitely more with the accounting and lawyers uh and deal side of things uh, i'm more on the marketing on the social media on the uh relationships building with you know investors those kind of things as well so that kind of cover it, it a little well bit? it's kind of like you said with your partner uh you know they're they're more front end and you're more back end and that's kind of us like uh, i like finding things and 
and all that. But Mel is more of the integrator, right? Making sure we have the systems and we dot the I's and cross the T's. So yeah, it, yeah. When, when it comes to vision, for sure, Dave is definitely the visionary. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, these ideas are all amazing, but how are we going to make it mm -hmm. all happen, right? So. No, that's that's uh, it's amazing. I like I still put my, my wife does still stuff stuff for us, but she's like a creative person. So I put her on like the apparel. So she manages all the apparel side and the drop things uh, website and all that stuff. So like she that. has her own, she has her own little thing in the business that help, helps us out. But it's it's a team effort from me and my partner, his wife, my wife, and hopefully my kids one day and her his kids one day. So it's one of those things where like every it's a team effort from a lot of different people pushing in the same direction. Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. So, um, what is a quote that is yours or somebody else's that you resonate with? Hmm. I know one, but I think I'm stealing yours. <laughs> quote by Mel Dupree. There you go. <laughs> no, no, it's one that you like that we say all the time. It's a, it's an Albert Einstein one. Like, oh yes. Um, how does it go? Well, Even if you don't quote it. No, it's, exactly. it's something about basically you can't solve a problem with the same mindset that created it, right? Like I absolutely love when I think about that. And I just, I always think of people when they come to us for, for real estate investing, coaching and mentoring, like it's like, okay, you're thinking like a consumer. You you you, you want to be an investor, but you're thinking like a consumer. Like you, you can't be both. If you're, if you're wanting to buy properties and invest, you can't go into it with a consumer, especially if you're using uh, creative finance. Right? Mm -hmm. like you have to think like an investor. Um, the other one I like, and, and for example, and sorry, you can expand on your net, your other one, but interest rate, right? That's something we all often get. Well, do you have to pay higher interest rate? Not necessarily, not always, sometimes, of course, uh, but bigger picture as an investor, if I'm able to buy 10 times the amount of properties mm -hmm. and I still get to cash flow and I get the appreciation over many years, of course, as opposed to having one, it's just saving a little bit on interest. If you look at, at the bigger picture where we're further ahead. So it's really having that investor. Uh, focused mindset. Sorry, Dave, what was your second quote? Uh, it was just, I, I listened to, well, we both listened to Rich Dad Poor Dad probably four times a year, the audio book, just while doing stuff. It just, we pick up so many different things every time. And I was just listening to it again this past week. And he was just, how did he say it? And it's not really a quote, but it's Robert Kiyosaki. So obviously everyone knows him, but it was just about how winners lose all the time, right? Um, and they're just used to losing, right? And he was basically saying like a professional golfer, they, they've never not lost a ball, right? Like it, like it just, it is what it is. And, and they've lost tournaments, but like Michael Jordan's missed, so they're saying like 4,000 shots, like winners lose and that's okay. But winners are winners because they don't stop at that loss. And it was just, I've heard it so many times, but it was just the way he said it this time or the way I listened to it this time. Um, successful investors have all lost money right it is what it is but they learn from it and people who have never lost a dime are typically people that have never invested because they're so scared so like which one would you rather anyway it was just pretty cool listening to it again uh both those quotes that both those quotes are they're really really good because it, it's uh it's a it's a different thing like if, you, if you're uh my, one of my one of my buddies he's one of my clients but he's like he's like uh producers are going to produce consumers are going to consume it's just one of those things where you have to you have to really like switch it you, you have to switch your old mentality off like she said to become that that other person to fix that problem like there's a lot of things that go with it but like what, whatever whatever issue that you didn't resolve you have to become better to fix it 100 percent well, mindset things. is so important right it, i mean real estate investing you can have the tools the resources the the calculations, the exit strategy, all those types of things that you need to have as an investor, but you also have to have that right mindset that, hey, if I have a problem, and hey, we've had a lot of, of course we've had difficulties throughout our, our careers and our, our journey, but quitting was definitely never a solution. No. It's like, okay, how, you know, how do we fix this? How do we make it better? How do we systemize this that maybe we're not doing so well? And, and taking the time to brainstorm with ourselves or with our team to, to find those solutions and knowing that, hey, um, if we, you study any highly successful investor or, or business, woman or, or, or man, uh, chances are we've all failed as, at some point as well. We just decided not to, to quit. No, it's the, it's the persistence that separates everybody else from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. It's, a, it's, the, it's, the, it's not that we're too big to fail, it's just we're too stupid not to. <laughs> <laughs> we're too stubborn yeah, to too fail. Yeah, too stubborn right? to give up, exactly. <laughs> I love that. 
Oh man, it's 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 a it's an interesting path of entrepreneurship, and like a lot of people are like, oh, so what do you want to be in five? Like, what are you going to be in five years? I think it's like a moot question to like entrepreneurs because like the path is like laid in front of you. You can only see so far, and you mm-hmm. kind of like there's many paths you could take, but it's just one of the things where like it's always it's like laying in front of you. The the brick is being laid laid in front of you, and you're like, you don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, um, what is a book that? And this is for both of you. What is a book that you like, like your best business or mindset book? Um, I'd say I love the book. I listened to it many times when I when I used to work full time and I was running um, Be Obsessed with the Average uh, by, by Grant Cardone. And it, it was more on the mindset uh, piece of, of things. Uh, but it definitely allowed me at a point in my life where I perhaps didn't have the confidence um, that, you know, who's this little northern girl that I grew up in a small city with no street lights that could, you know, become a successful big investor and quit her job, uh, just to be able to allow myself to to think big and, and take big action and um, be comfortable with that. So it definitely helped me with my own, mm-hmm. I guess, confidence in, in allowing it and knowing that, yeah, of course, it's okay to think big and take that big massive action because um sometimes we I, I would definitely get that negativity of hey why do you want to do this just you know you have enough properties just stop I'm like, but i don't want to stop <laughs> i want to and I'll, I'll never stop i'll do different types of projects and even now we're continuing to do different things of course as we evolve as as, as investors and and i think that's part of life you should be you should want to grow and do different things as well so um that would be a, that, that would be mine and, and no and i like that and mine kind of compound and, the be obsessed or be average, B-O-B-A, almost gives you like permission to, to be who you are, an entrepreneur, and, and, and you know, don't listen to the other people. And I, I know I already mentioned Rich Dad, Poor Dad, so that's obviously one, but uh, 10X, right? And I know it's Grant Cardone again. It's just, and this makes me think of you, because what was your goal? By the time you wanted 40, you wanted 10 properties or yeah, something? Yeah, before I turned, so in my 30s, I met Dave. And uh, and let's rewind here, for those who don't know me, like, you know, I was, we uh, had gone through 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 a divorce, and you know, we're still friends today. But it was still very very difficult. I'm living in a small two bedroom apartment with my with my girls, and I'm saying, hey, by the time I'm 40, I'm gonna have 10 properties. And everybody would tell me that I'm crazy or what would I want to do that? And um, and you know, by the time I turned 40, I had 27 properties, uh, probably because of you know having and, and thinking big, and, and not just goals, thinking yeah. big, but also taking that action behind it. So probably 10x, yeah, for those kind of. I know they both kind of. Anyway, they're both the same ish, but those would be the two books, I guess, Daniel. I, I think uh, I, I've never read the 10x, but I I live it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a reader myself, so like I was. The, the trick is if you're not a reader, join a book club because they break down all the nuggets for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tip. I love I that. Like that. I thought too, you were gonna yeah. say audiobook, but I love that idea too. No, uh, well, I mean, it's the, it's the other thing too. Like when you, and this is this. How old are your kids right now? Because you said you had kids earlier. And maybe yeah, so 17, 14, 14 and seven. a little seven year old. Well, my my kids are young. I got five, three, two. So I'm like I'm all over the place. Like chasing little ones around the room and picking them up and throwing throwing them across the room and stuff like that. Still, <laughs> and, and we, today we're funny. Today we're we're talking about that flexibility, right? Being investors and yeah. Today we spent our morning at our daughter's uh, with the seventeen year old, with my seventeen year old, high school applying to three different colleges with the guidance counselor, right? But the beauty is, is we didn't have to ask a boss. We just went. We just didn't come into the office. We just went there this morning instead. So it is cool. So, um, what's are are your children interested in what you do, or they they're planning to go off to college and do something else? Um, and I, it's kind of hard because they're so young. I, I would say ish. Like right now, I don't think I think she's they they all see I think the value. Even my little guy, um, I remember taking him to Disney, and he said, "Mom and I mean, Dad didn't pay for this vacation. The properties." paid for it right so he gets the mindset of it and my daughters um get the mindset of it and i don't think that's necessarily what they want to do full-time at least not yet um and that's completely fine i want them to love that their passion do what they do and that's Mm -hmm. a cool thing about it but they understand that hey uh for example they love horses well it's expensive to to own horses and 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 all that well uh, if i have some properties i can do what i want during the daytime and have that help with with um that uh, with well with the money that needs to come in uh, to live the lifestyle I want to live type thing. So uh, yeah, they don't, I don't think full-time investors as of right now, but they're still so young. 
I had no I, I had no idea I wanted to be an investor at 17 either. So, <laughs> well, the cool thing, and I'm just thinking, like we we talk a lot about su uh, succession planning lately, and you know what happens, and doing the wills with the lawyers, and all that you know, doom and gloom stuff. And you start thinking, well, what would be best? And it's not necessarily replicating exactly our footsteps, but and yeah. I kind of like we've been talking with a lot of different lawyers and attorneys and estate planning people and. I kind of like some of the different, like, like for example, uh, the 17 year old's going to graphic design. Okay. So maybe she doesn't have to be an exact real estate investor, but what if down the road, it could be something that complements the business, right? Where we leave them real estate and maybe they do the, or whatever, if they become uh, uh, something else in their field that they want to do, and maybe it complements down the road. Anyway, she so it's just find my next book cover or something. Well, Who it's knows? Just <laughs> things like that, right? Where it doesn't have to be the main thing is, is not real estate, but maybe indirectly. So anyway, it's kind of having those conversations with them, but try not to force them into anything that they don't want to either. Right? Well, it's not for everyone. Exactly. It's really about living their best life. And um, if they want to actively do that, then that's great. Or maybe it's going to be more passive and they just have mm -hmm. a few properties in, in the background. And that's amazing as well. No, I, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I, I still have young kids. So I'm like, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm really, I'm always like in the back of my mind. I'm like, I don't want them to get older, but every time I look at them, they're getting bigger and they're getting heavier to lift. <laughs> It goes so quickly, That's of perfect, course. Yeah. So, yeah, but just involving them and, and involving them in different aspects. I think they, uh, I mean, I remember when, well, when I used to do my own property management, sometimes I'd, uh, the kids would come with me and I would do the viewing or after a tenant might have destroyed the property, I would show them. And, and, and out of having that exposure was great experiences for them as well, just mm -hmm. to being able to know, well, what kind of lifestyle do I want and, and what people sometimes do and to be grateful for what you have as well. So I, I think, I think one of the coolest things, like, I didn't even, I, this is like my first year that I, I like traveled a lot and it was kind of cool to like take my family with me, even though they weren't there or watch me or whatever. It was just kind of cool knowing they're somewhere, somewhere on the property enjoying themselves. And they went out to dinner with friends, with the people in the area or something. It was kind of cool to take them with yeah. me on, on business trips. That's so knowing, knowing they're there with me, it was kind of cool. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, well, that's a good feeling, Daniel. Good for you. Yeah. So, um, tell us a little bit about your about your uh, community. What 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 can people learn in your community? And is that at investormeldave.com? Um, our website's investormeldave.com, um, and we're on all social media platforms, um, on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, LinkedIn, it's, it's always Investor Mel Dave. If you wanna, if you wanna follow us there, we have different content every day. But yeah, our community—it's called the Action Family Mentoring Program, um, where we show people how to buy properties using none of our own money and no joint venture partners. It's a—it's a nice big community. Um, they're getting us directly, so uh, they're not paired off with with anybody else. We're their coaches. We answer their questions uh, very regularly. Dave does a, a live with them every single yeah, week as well. Workshop. Um, so there's lots of things that, and I mean, there's daily there's, Q and A in the Facebook groups. Yeah. We introduce them to all the pros that we use. So yeah, we try and be as, as hands-on as possible. Uh, and I think that's why it's, it's been so much success, right? It's, 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 well, what's that saying? Get it directly from the horse's mouth. So it's like, Hey, we're the ones who have thousands of tenants and have issues. So it's, it's learning directly from someone who's been there, done that. How long have you been doing the, the community? Well, it started after, it's funny, I never thought about becoming a coach. Same here. <laughs> it's not th something we thought of. We bought a lot yeah. of properties and, and that was We didn't share decided. anything. Like we had a huge no. scarcity mindset. Like our parents, our friends, and we wouldn't tell them anything. And it was like, you know, it was My a mom asked secret. me if I won the lottery. I'm like, no, mom, it's, How you buy it's like, it's illegal. Buildings? I'm like, yes, mom, it's legal. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, and our mindset shift in, in 2018, we were in a really bad yeah. um, highway rollover crash we were passengers in a vehicle just outside of toronto canada um, we rolled four times landed upside down so it was a it was yeah we, we almost said they don't know how we were able to survive and it was um the day that changed so many mm -hmm. things i never ended up going back to work after that um and it just completely changed my mindset on, on how i want to live and what i want to be known for and, and being able to pass on the knowledge to other people as well well and the biggest thing and daniel you're, you're a parent so the biggest thing for us is like our kids wouldn't even know how we're buying this, like because we're so secretive. And that was the thing we're like, we gotta change that. Like more people should be doing this. Our kids need to know how we're doing it. And that's when the action family was. Yeah. Now was we have created. hundreds of documentations and videos and all that kind of stuff. So they'd be well in their way if ever something were to happen. But yeah, that, that's where it kind of started. So it was in 2018 that yeah, we started. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. And then early 2019 ish is yeah. when we did the betas and we did the, anyway. So yeah. No, I, I, and the big reason why I do this too is because, like, 
I can't have I can't have a business conversation with my five year old or my three year old. They don't even understand what I'm saying. So like, <laughs> one, of the, one of the biggest reasons why I do this is because I might pass away tomorrow. But there's a lot of there's a lot people people can watch my videos and know who I really am, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like my my personal side of why I do this is because, like I said, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but these videos will always be out there forever, and I hope they inspire somebody to eventually go down the path I did. Because the crazy thing about it is. Somebody inspired you. Somebody inspired me. Somebody somebody was the inspiration for you to do what you do. So it's very selfish of you not to give back and produce that content and just release everything you got and give it freely. Yeah, and Gary V says the same thing too, right? One day, like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he, uh, and you're making me think just of him, is one day when we're not here, our grandchildren and their grandchildren will be able to watch our videos, right? So it's kind of cool to, to do all this kind of stuff. It's uh, It, it feels... Like it feels unreal, but I don't. I didn't even think about that far. I'm like my grandkids. <laughs> but, but you're you're 100 right. You're 100 right. Like it's like I wish. Who knows what they'll be saying about us? But hey, but at least I'm to see it, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like it's one of those things where like the technology has been able to extend your personality. Or like before, it was just books or people writing about you by autobiographies and stuff like that. But like not every person has stuff written about them like you don't you might not even know anything about your great grandparents at all you know it's one of those things where like there was nothing written about them there was nothing they lived their whole life and generations passed and you're here today but you don't never knew who they were and yeah. i think it's an opportunity missed 100 percent. i agree with you so it's it's uh it's definitely an interesting time and day and age we live in i might be a hologram for somebody else you know <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an interesting world we live in but um, I, 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 lo- I love community. I love that. You, I love people that for everybody out there, anybody can start a community. It is not hard. It's, it's just building, putting out valuable content and the people will come to learn. Um, do you have a crazy story from somebody from your community? I'm sure you have tons because I have a ton too. But can you think of like one good story, maybe one, one, one from each of you about something, some crazy win that your community member had? I have one. Yeah, I'll go first if that's okay. Um, I have this lady, and um, and and if everybody wants to the full episode, it's on my uh, it's on my Investor Mel Dave YouTube. I have a woman of uh, of action series, Um, and her name is Camila. And her and her husband had um, immigrated from Jamaica to Alberta, and uh, they joined our mentoring program. And and what I love about her story, she said, "I thought this was for the rich. I thought buying real estate was for the rich." And, you know, they were scared, of course, when they first joined, right, joined the mentorship program and thinking, well, I don't have that many funds and who's going to want to lend me money? I don't know anyone. And they joined our community. Um, they bought over 100 units since joining our community, community in less than two years. Um, now I see them like I saw them a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. They went on a month trip somewhere, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so and, and when I interviewed her on my show, I said, well, how did you raise all that money? And she actually raised the money inside the community, inside the Action Family Powerful. Mentoring Program, which was pretty neat. Just by networking and 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 being, you know, because we there's we're active in there every day, and so are our students. So it's a pretty powerful story. Mm-hmm. That's it's amazing. Funny. Yeah, no, it's yeah, super no, cool. absolutely amazing, and I I just love it. Like, yeah, it's just uh, so inspiring. Uh, yeah, no, and there's a lot of people. Yeah, I'm just thinking as well. One that really sticks out to me is uh zoe and ted as well they had immigrated we have a lot of people that are canadian u.s new to canada new to u.s so uh, they had immigrated as well um uh and and when they met us they went to the banks right they went to the big banks and the bank said you can't buy a house so they were renting and they were like we can't even buy a house we want to buy properties like what are we going to do and fast forward i think about a year or two later they now own their home right they're in a house uh and they own 20 units actually sorry not 20 they own 28 they have 20 units. They recently just purchased eight in Florida. In, in the States, yeah. That's right, in Florida. They did uh, six properties for eight units, 100% financed. So it's just cool to see from banks telling you, hey, you can't even buy your own house to now providing housing to 28 different people and having their house. Like, it's just... We got to meet them in person, we got to too, meet at them a, too, at an so event we, uh, it's pretty we cool were stuff, recently right? speaking at, which was pretty neat. So. Man, that is amazing. I, I think it's, I think for everybody who's immigrants or wants to invest overseas, like it, it, it really shows you that owner financing and creative financing is the key to creating that wealth you want. And that's the, that's the one strategy that the banks ain't going to deny you if you, if you get a loan directly from seller. 
They can't stop you. I, I man, this has been this has been an amazing episode. I hope everybody found value in that. And like I said, I think it's amazing what you're doing with community. I love community, and it's taken it's given me like different inspiration to really know what 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 can be done even without you. It's just a movement you created where people participate and they share knowledge and money and funds, and there's just a lot of things happening in the background that never happens without the community that with the people just into so I agree. people say that to us all the time as well then you're like why did you know why do you do this well even we talked about dominican republic those uh, we have two we bought two properties there they're actually from our students who they're from new jersey um they bought two properties i believe it was in new jersey and they're the, yeah. and they're the developers for 100 unit in dr for example um and we yeah, we've the invested deal. in their deal yeah we bought two of them because cool. i love the deal so much uh so yeah you, you just never know and i never expected that of course when they first joined but you just never know what can happen which is which uh i'm with you uh, i love the community the show is sponsored by the list guys do you need more leads in your local or virtual market one in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The list guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The list guys are here to save you time. Contact the list guys today at www.1listguys.com. That's the number one listguys.com thanks for coming on today i hope you all enjoyed this episode investor mel dave on facebook instagram tiktok twitter just google them i'm sure you'll find a lot of information investormeldave.com thanks for coming on this has been a great episode i, I thanks for your, your time and uh, the contribution you make to the world oh you awesome. know what thank you you were amazing to speak with you had a lot of fun so yeah, thank, you so thank you so much for, so much. for having us there you go see you on the next episode we'll see you next time